Okay, today we're working on module two and we're looking at ranges. So there's a few different ways that you can select a range when you're working in a spreadsheet. So again, pay attention to how the directions ask you to select a range. If they don't specify how you have to select the range, then again, you have a choice on how you can do that. But I'm gonna show you um, three different ways that um, you can select a range. The first way you can do that is by using your mouse. And again, when you're using your mouse, you'll have your index and middle finger on it, and you're gonna left click, so that would be using your index finger with your mouse. So I'm gonna select a range by using my index finger I'm gonna click in the first cell and just hold down with my index finger until I get all of the cells selected that I want. So all I did was click, hold, and you know, move my mouse over for the range. And the range I was looking for was A2 through H2. So that selected the range that way. And again, it's always gonna do the column and then the number. So the column was A, row is two through H two. Um, another way you can do that is by holding the shift key. So again, I'm gonna start with um, in the cell where I wanna start with, which was A two, I'm gonna hold down my shift key and then use my arrow to go over. So this is my right arrow key and it's gonna highlight the cell range um, through H2. So that's the next way I can do that. The third way is you can use this name box up here at the top um, left hand corner of your screen. So I've already started in A2. I can just simply put a colon after that and I can type H2 and it will select that range. So those are three easy ways you can do that. Now say I want to select multiple ranges at one time. The easiest way to do that is to hold down my control key. So this is the control key on your keyboard. And then I can just select it with my mouse or use my shift and arrow key or however. I typically do it with my mouse and just click on the ranges, but you can do it however you want to, and then just let go with your control key. So that's gonna highlight multiple ranges. And then you've got all of those ranges selected. See how they're all highlighted? So that's on selecting a range. And um, the next thing we're doing is looking at changing font. So, we looked at font a little bit last week. And so again, the font, you, you can do change the font in one range or multiple ranges. So if I wanted to change the font in multiple ranges, again, I would select multiple ranges or a single range or whatever I wanted to do. And then this is the font group. Remember in my font group, I can change the size of my text, what, type, what the style of my text is going to be. Um, so that's the font of my text, the size of my text, the style of it, if I want it bold, italics, underline, um, the background color. So if I want background color, that's what the paint bucket is. If I want to change the color of my text, so I can do all of those things here. And remember, there is a drop down menu here um, where I can get more options. I can also go into the number, the alignment, the border, changing the border of things, and again, the fill color, and all kinds of options in there. Okay, so that's the font group. Um, the alignment group is right next to this. And in the alignment group, you can wrap text, you can merge and center. So if I wanted to merge and center this, so 
So maybe I just want to select this range. And I want to merge and center. That's what merge and center looks like. Go merge and center one section. Um, wrap text. If I've got multiple items listed, I think we talked about this last time, but if I've got multiple items written in one cell, I can hit merge and center and it'll center it, but it'll merge all of that together. And I'm sorry, not merge and center. I was talking about wrap text. Wrap it, it'll wrap the writing around and it kind of widens out that row as well so that all the text will fit where you can see it within that one cell. So that's what wrap text does. Um, this is format alignment, this AB with a line under it. And then you can do, this is how you change like the writing. So like these over here, if you wanted these format aligned where you could read them long ways, this is the format alignment that would do that. So let me scroll down and show you if you wanted to read them sideways or how they're at an angle over here, you can change that with the format alignment group. You would just change the direction of how you want to rotate that text so that you can read it in a different way. Um, you can also center your text so you can align it left, center alignment, align right. This is middle align, top align, um, bottom align. So there's all kinds of different alignments here. And again, there's the more alignment settings where you can scroll that out. And then here's where you change like the orientation. I don't think you do any of that in this section, but later on you'll be using the orientation here where you can specify certain degrees that you can change the, the text, how you want to rotate it around. So that's all in the alignment group. The number group is right next to this. So again, this is where you're going to have your accounting number format, your percentage. You'll add comma style to it. You can increase your decimals or decrease your decimals. So if you want to add decimals to the end of something on a number format or make it with no decimals, this is where you would do that. And again, you change any of these here. So if you're adding like dates, short date, long date, if you want to add time, um, if you're adding numbers, I know last time we had to add um, text, let's see it offhand in here. Um, we had to add text to get the, the zip code um, to come up. Remember when we were adding the zero in the front of that zip code, you had to add change that to text because if you have a zero, it's not going to show up when you're in a number. So um, just little things like that is, is things that you can do in the number format and you have more number formats when you come again to this format sales. You have other things that you can do in here. Um, your styles group is next. This is where you're going to use like conditional formatting. You can format as a table. You can do your cell styles and different items like that. And conditional formatting. This is your highlight sales rule. When you do like greater than, less than, between, equal to, text contains um, a date occurring like between a certain number You'll use um, your top and bottom. Um, this is where you'll find that. This is where you'll find data bars, your color scaling. Um, you'll add a new rule here. You'll, you'll clear your rules if you're wanting to start over. Um, and then your manage rule. So you'll be using this. And here, this is conditional formatting. So this is where you find those options. So remember that's your format cells or your styles group and then conditional formatting. And again, your textbook will walk you through that. And again, in the, um, the project, um, I've got notes specifically on that, on how you, how you get to those when we get kind of down the road. This is just a general overview on how to find 
some of these things. Um, in your sales group, you'll, you'll see how to insert, okay? This is how you insert cells, rows, columns, or sheets. Sheet rows, sheet columns, and insert actual sheets. How you'll delete cells, delete sheet rows, delete sheet columns, and you can delete a whole sheet. And this is a sheet, remember, where we added our sheet or deleted a sheet. It says you can go here to delete it. Um, and you can actually format from here as well. So this is where you can change your column width um, if you want a specific number in your column width. So say it asks you for 26.5, you will want to go here to change your column width. You don't want to go here and adjust um, by right clicking your mouse because that's gonna auto fit that column. If you wanted a specific number, this would be the place to go to format that column width. So you would use want to use your cell group and format that column width or your row height or things like that. You can also go here to rename your sheet. Now I know last time um, we went in here to, and you can double click to rename a sheet, but this is another way um, that you can go in here and rename a sheet as well. You can move or copy a sheet. You can change your tab colors of your sheets down here. Sometimes it's easy to quickly reference if you have your tabs color coded as you're going down through there. Sometimes I do that in my Excel spreadsheets. I'll color code the tabs and it's just an easy way because your eyes visually go to certain colors. So it's an easy way to quickly reference things if you're making spreadsheets a lot. Um, later on, we'll get into protecting sheets and things like that. But that's where that is, is in the cells section. Okay. And then um, our editing group, this contains items to edit our worksheet. So if, if we're wanting to um, change like the auto sum function, this will automatically sum up a section of, of your columns and it gives you examples as you're kind of hovering over it. So if I want to total up several rows at one time, I'm going to highlight all of those rows and then click on that auto sum button and it'll give me the tally of what those rows are. It'll also do like the average, the count. So um, for instance, if I have all of my students in one section and I want to quickly know how many students I have, I just highlight the num all of my students that I have in that section and then hit count numbers at the bottom and it'll give me a count of how many students I have and I don't have to sit there and try to figure out how many I have in that section, especially if I don't have them, you know, in chronological order. Because um, I know there are numbers out to the left of the rows, you know, so I could easily look and see how many rows I have, but maybe I don't have them in that specific order. Maybe I have other things written in there or broken up, but this would tell me a good, easy way to count. So that's another way that you can use that. It'll also tell you the max, min, and then there's also a more functions under there that you can use. And um, this will give you a feel where you can, um, this is another way to do like the flash fill. So you can flash fill down, you can flash fill to the right, you can do it up, you can do it to the left. So you don't always have to just go down. You can flash fill multiple different ways. And then here's that flash fill section. So you can fill down, right, up, left. You can do a series, um, fill by justifying. There's all kinds of different ways you can do that. And then clear will delete everything that you have in the cell or remove just the formatting. So this is a good one to have as well. Um, the sort and filter you will be using um, as well. So you can sort, you can just select on one item, you can sort it from A to Z, sort Z to A, 
the custom sort thing. Um, can't show you right now because we're not doing that. We'll be using that one later on, the custom sort, where you can select a range, and I'll show you that later on when we get more into that one. But um, you'll add layers to it and and be able to sort. And then there's the quick filter where you can filter stuff. And then find and select. This is very handy to use um, as well to find, replace, go to something quickly. So this is all located in your edit tab. So all of these are located from the home, the home tab up top, and these are in your different groups. So like last time we worked in the clipboard group, these are all from the font, alignment, number, styles, cells, and editing groups. The only other one, I believe, there's two other ones that we're going to be talking about today that are in a different group. And these are located from the page layout group. And one that we'll be looking at is the themes group. You will be um, changing the theme of your workbook. So you can see you have all these different themes here. Can't remember offhand which one you'll be changing your theme to. Um, I think you're using Office in this one. So when you change it to Office, it just changes to different colors of blue and orange. So that's where you find the theme. It's from Page Layout and Theme and Themes and then Select Theme. And then you can also change, change it to a different color palette that asks you to change the colors here from that palette. And then you also have different fonts that you can choose from and different effects that you can choose from. So these are handy tools to have. Um, the last one we're talking about is the page setup. We talked about this a little bit last time when you were setting up your different areas, but um, you're looking at margins. You can adjust your, your margin here You've got like the normal margin, you've got wide, narrow, or you can do like a custom margin if you need to. You've got orientation, you have portrait and landscape. The size, if you're using a different type of size that you need to print on, here's where you would change that, which again, we're not printing in this class, but just in case you ever need that. Um, the print area, you would set that up here. Um, sometimes in this class, you would, you're gonna set your print area, but again, we're not physically printing, but here's where you would set that up. You would set the print area or you would clear your print area. You will add your page breaks here. You would insert page breaks and remove a page break. So if you set up a page break and you didn't mean to set it there, here's where you remove it. You go to breaks and then remove and then you'll just insert a new one, okay? And background is where you can insert a background. Sometimes it'll give us a background that it wants us to use in the background of our um, Excel workbook. So it'll give us a file to use as we're going through that. So you'll choose the file that we um, that it gives you to download. So occasionally it'll give you a file, an extra file um, in your project or your textbook project or something. And so you'll go to background, insert, and then choose the file, okay? And then um, your print titles, this will set up your headers and footers. Um, and then you can also set up the sheets that you want to repeat. So if you want to set like headers and footers or sheets that you want to repeat over and over, this is where you would do that is the print titles. And again, there are other options that you can set up here. You can have those quick options that you can pull down this menu and select those from. But that's all I have for you this week in module two. So I hope that helps explain where everything's at. And I promise you're going to get used to this. I know it's a lot of information to take in. Excel is full of good stuff for you to, to learn how to use. But 
you'll get the hang of it, I promise. Hope you have a great week.